go down the inside to the end and then back down and this is where they get trapped in that, that little section there. So that net there covers roughly nearly a half of the river here. So that's probably going to catch nearly 50. Oh, see the, the net on the outside. Pretty hard life for a fish here, eh? Like there's so many, so many traps and stuff to go catching them. And a lot of them, like you see, the mesh size very, very small. So you know, we would catch fish like that, that size or, or bigger. Is that a sign of just the fact where we are in fisheries? Like that they have to now everybody's just trying to catch these teeny fish. I think what's happened here is historically. They would have been catching much larger fish here, but as the fish size has reduced, the fishing techniques have changed, and, and then as the fishery has started to collapse, for want of a better word, that's pushed them into destructive techniques. So you've seen here, you know, that is a destructive form of fishing, even though you might look at it and say, oh, it's only a net. Very few fish would make it up above the nets that we've seen. We've already seen probably eight or nine of the nets, and each one has said over maybe half Third, three quarters of the of the river, very little is going to make it up. And some of the fish coming up here would be, would be spawning fish, and you need your spawning fish for the next year. So I think it's just a sign of a, of a fishery that is in collapse, and the fishermen are getting more and more desperate to catch fish, and it's making them use more destructive methods. At the moment, they they're overfishing it to such a degree that it is this fishery will collapse. There's no no two ways about it. Fisheries management needs to cut the number of fishermen that are on here and also get rid of the destructive techniques that catch those very tiny things. So it's, it's about rethinking the entire, the entire use of this lake. Historically this lake has fed something like 70% of Cambodia's population. It's a massive lake, but with it collapsing, They've got to accept they cannot feed their population from this lake anymore to such a high degree. There's still there's still plenty of fish to be caught here, but with it being so low now, they need to let this lake recover and get back to a reasonable level of fish before they can really start harvesting in a decent way. Better management, eh? This is a water snake. It's a rainbow water snake. Ah. We have uh, 11 species. See? What's that? We have 11 species in the water snake and in the lesser. Sorry, what does he say? 11 species. 11 species, 11 okay. 11 species. Wow. This is called a rainbow water snake. Uh, they have 11 different species of water snake here in the in the ecosystem, and these are a key part of it. Um, most of these these days get used to feed crocodiles in the crocodile parks. Crocodile skins are sold for leather, um, and I can't help but think this is not a great use of such a resource. Um, most of the other fish, I think, end up uh, being sold in the markets for food. And they've got snails here. I didn't realise that. They've, they've got these massive snails. Let's see, I'll just pass the snake back to the lady. Right, come on. Could I just grab a snail? Just grab, grab a snail. Well, it's this one here. So they have these freshwater snails that are sold in the markets as well for food. Interestingly, they've got like this sort of flap on the bottom here. So this comes down and the muscle comes out. So now he's kind of in protection mode. You can see how that, that sort of folds right up in there. It's amazing how nature finds it. Amazing the thing, 11 different species of water snake in this ecosystem. 11. New Zealand doesn't have one. Holy cow, look at the size of those. And they said this is not a native in uh, Tule Sap Lake. Uh -huh. This is uh, normally we call a uh, Thai snake or Vietnamese snake. Yeah. Because that's that uh, snail, sorry, not snake. Mm -hmm. snail. Yeah, yeah. So the snail always destroy a uh, plant.
like rice or something and they lay egg on the on on the the the, the you see water hyacinths the, the water plants yep. you see the red the red one the red spot this is the the, the egg of uh, the snail um, mm. but uh, for for uh, our snail in the lesser black they lay egg they, they different places not lay on the, the plant like this can you ask them for how long have these two been fishing together? I assume they're like a married couple, are, and they fish together? Can you ask them for how many years they go fishing? When they were young. When they were young. So they've been fishing since they were like almost kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They destroy the fishing net when uh, they start, they shock, shock yeah, yeah. Uh, like this and destroy the fishing net. But for, for uh, and the, and the snail, yeah, yeah. Cambodia snail, I don't know what yeah, yeah, okay. mm. They will destroy it. Can you ask them, the, the fishing today, is it easier or more hard than, than it used to be? Yeah. Uh, more difficult. Can you ask them why? We're talking about many, many conservation areas, but many uh, fish were extinct. Sorry, many, 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 many conservation areas like. Some some sites are protected by conservation yeah. by uh, uh, community fish, mm -hmm. fish uh, fishery. Yep. But fish are gone. The fish are gone. The fish are gone. Yeah, okay. We mean, mean that many many conservation group, but many many illegal person try to. Ah, try it's to illegal fish. fishing. Yeah, illegal mm. fishing. What 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 type of illegal fishing? Now, okay, okay. But long time, the sa protect the sa okay get away from it. เรื่องตอนไหนที่ได้ทําทําได้แล้วเป็นน้ําเยิ้งใหญ่เต้าเป็นท่าเกือบไปกับป๊อปเกือบไปกับป๊อปยังอาเห็นใหญ่จริง